the fact that we are uh, we are spiritual, then this whole pursuit of religiosity becomes uh, it becomes academic uh, because uh, uh, dharma or religion uh, it may have to do something with the body, but secondarily, primarily it has to do with the with the uh, with the soul. Like uh, for instance, if uh, if somebody does not accept the distinction between the body and soul, they will not accept the law of karma. So they will not accept the fact that there is pious and impious activities. They will not accept the fact that there are adverse reactions to performing sinful activities. Um, so the pursuit of spirituality will either be absent, or even if it is there, it will be just academic or very, very superficial. So Krishna also does not speak a lot about it uh, because uh, as Prabhupada explains that one who is, who is reading the Bhagavad Gita has, uh, has already crossed that uh, bridge. They are lo they're looking for something more than uh, just the physical or the material plane of the existence. So that's considered to be uh, confidential knowledge. Um, that you are not the body, but you are the eternal spirit. So, then, further on, beginning from the fourth chapter, Krishna begins to tell a little bit about himself. So, uh, beginning from four uh, seven, I believe, first time he speaks, he speaks directly about himself. He says, "Janma karma chame devyam yo me veti tatvata tikta deva kuna janma." So he says, that my appearance and my activities are divine. They are divine. And you may veti tattvata. One who knows. So veti means knows. One who knows this tattva. Tattva means truth, essential truth. So you may veti tattvata jayam punar jayam. Then when he deham is body, takta deham. When he gives up this body, puna jama, no birth again. Neti ma, neti so, arjuna. But he will come back to me. So uh, from the fourth chapter onward, Krishna successively reveals more and more about himself. Seventh and eighth, especially specifically, the knowledge of the absolute. He talks more about um, about himself. Then ninth chapter is considered the most confidential because in the ninth chapter he will he explains the relationship between the jiva and himself. So in the ninth chapter, uh, the ninth chapter is one of the most quoted chapters of Bhagavad Gita because so many uh, uh, wonderful uh, nuggets of knowledge, information, Krishna. Uh, reveals. He, he talks about his uh, partiality to his devotees. He says, I'm impartial to everybody, but I'm partial to my devotees. And uh, then he talks about the extent of his partiality. And he says, even if my devotee is engaged in the most abominable activities, then he's still my devotee. Which means that he's still partial. And he says that for my devotees, I preserve what they have and I carry what they lack. So he says they don't have to be perfect. Even if they are aspiring devotees, <coughs> even if they are, even if they are uh, um, uh, uh, one person devotees, they're still my devotees. And I will, I will preserve that one person that they have and I will carry the. 99% that they like. So when Krishna says carrying, that means he says that he will make up for it. And uh, so uh, so in this way, because uh, Krishna is uh, Krishna is revealing uh, 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 the inner working of the relationship. <coughs> so it's like uh, it's like a student goes to goes to a uh, to uh, to a school. 
And then in the assembly, the principal comes up and says, all of you have to study very hard. And we are a school that conducts oneself by very, very strict code of conduct. And all the students are in awe and reverence. And then some students, the principal calls to his office and he says, if you're not late, it's okay. I'll, I'll take care. I'll take care of it. So if the principal stands in the assembly and speaks to the 400, 500 students, then the whole school will become naughty. Because everybody will think that you know, the principal is the principal has said. Even if the principal don't, doesn't say that children are naughty. But if they hear this concession, they will become very naughty. So that's why Krishna in deep confidence is revealing this, this information about the extra protection that he gives to his devotees. So beginning from the 10th chapter, so the 10th, 11th and 12th chapters are special because uh, after having revealed, so what remains after when you have revealed the most confidential knowledge? So in the 10th, 11th and 12th chapter, Krishna will reveal successively even more confidential knowledge. So it's uh, uh, so somebody once asked uh, uh, Prabhupada, Prabhupada would say, this is best, this is best. Chanting is best. Deity worship is best. And somebody said, Prabhupada, which is best? You say everything is best. Something has to be, because best is a superlative, it's good, better, best. How can everything be best? Prabhupada said, this is, this is spirituality. So something is best, something is bester, and something is bestest. But everything is, everything is, uh, is, uh, uh, is best. So in the 10th chapter, Krishna reveals about uh, <clears throat> how can he be perceived in nature. So this is for the, this is for the, for the lowest class of devotees. Now again, sometimes when you use the term the lowest class, they seem a little, uh, what's the word, like diminishing or derogatory, but they are not. So they are like bestest, best, best, or bestest. Anybody, anybody who turns to Krishna is best. The devotee has, is uh, as the as the impersonal Brahman. The nature of the Brahman is that it is all pervasive, everywhere, um, can be experienced at all points of time. So the whole omni, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. That's the Brahman. In the 11th chapter, he talks about himself as the super soul. And then in the 12th chapter, Krishna talks about himself as Swain Bhagavan. <clears throat> and uh, really speaking, at the end of the 12th chapter, the Bhagavad Gita is over. Because Krishna has given everything that one needs to know. He has talked about the jiva, he has talked about himself, he's talked about the relationship, he's talked about successive levels of realization. But then the, even after that, there are six more chapters. And those six chapters are for those who say, I'm still not convinced, Krishna. I hear whatever you're saying. I want to do it, but I'm not able to do it. What about everything that I see around me? Why is it that even though I know that you are God, I am still not able to develop attachment for you? So in order to answer all those questions, so the last six chapters are mostly about Jnana. So we say Bhagavad Gita is divided into three sections. The first six chapters are about Karma. The last six chapters are about Jnana. And then the middle six chapters, Prabhupada will say that just like a pearl is carefully protected by the two hard coverings of the of the oyster. And just like a king travels in the middle of a procession and he's preceded and followed by, by his um, supporters and his servants, in the middle of the Bhagavad Gita, protected by karma and jnana on both sides is bhakti. So the middle six chapters is talking about uh, uh, talking about uh, bhakti. 
So, so with this uh, general understanding of the flow, let's start with the 10th chapter, the opulence of the, of the Absolute. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Uyayeva Mahabha Chapter Krishna it is, we are substantiating it. And when a person hears this, then his desire to go to Florida it becomes stronger. Earlier on you might think, okay, it's a good place. I understand it's a good place. If you're listening with faith, it's a good place. But then we start elaborating upon it. And then he again, he says, and we have, it's not like Krishna then goes after that person, but, but Krishna withdraws the mercy from, uh, from, that, uh, uh, from the person. But uh, devotees, uh, especially those who are in the line lineage of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 